Hi, I've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Sunday, October 21st, and I must apologize sincerely for not having made any videos in six weeks. The last time I made one was when Leslie was moving up east of Bermuda, and uh, that was the last time I posted. School hit it. Uh, school hit in September, and it has been very crazy, and I just have not had the time. Fortunately, we have not had any storms significantly threatening land since Leslie, except for Raphael, which came up here and brought heavy rain to the Antilles Islands, but really didn't do that much other than that, so it wasn't a huge deal. Most of our storms have been out here, which has been the story of the season, of course, as we've talked about, because the El Nino, a lot of the favorable waters have been to the north and to the east, and so we have not had any significant threats to the U.S. or the Caribbean islands since Isaac. But right now we do have a threat here in the late season, late October, and we look down to the Caribbean as the MJO pulse comes back, which I've been talking about a uh, periodically on Facebook and you can see that there's a little bit of rotation here south of Jamaica now and uh, most of the thunderstorms are off to the east of it at the moment but you can see the upper level airflow to the north of it is in a general anticyclonic or clockwise fashion indicating upper level ridging over the region there is an upper trough over the Gulf of Mexico here and as this eventually tries to come northward it's going to be dealing with this possibly some shear possibly some dry air infiltrating the storm as it comes up but in general the environment should remain fairly favorable for this as ridging builds to its northeast as the models are showing for the next few days and this should be able to develop gradually here. It's going to take its time. It's going to be taking a dive towards Nicaragua here and then turning around and getting drawn up by the trough which we'll see in a bit here and the models uh, generally showing this and I generally agree with this general track here. You can see the models are in great agreement and they really should be because late in the season with these deep troughs that come down to get these systems this far south uh, they should have a pretty good idea of how the trough is working and this should be the general track that it takes um, and I'll show you in a minute why it probably won't be coming much farther west than that. Here's the GFS 12Z run out to five and a half days and you can see what it has here 985 millibar probably hurricane sitting in the northern Bahamas and you can see a lot of heavy rain on the western side and it's spread out to the east but most of the dry air will be coming around the south side so there's the chance for a very strong pressure gradient and heavy rains to be in the northwestern quadrant of the system which means the Bahamas and even possibly southern Florida could be getting uh, the some beef from the system, some high winds and heavy rain, and this is going to be nothing to sneeze at for a late October slash early November storm here. Now if we take a look at the 500 millibar pattern as this evolves, this is out to day three. These are the heights in contours and the anomalies in the colors here. And you can see the depression down here indicating 99L as it starts to move up towards Jamaica and Cuba. Now notice what we have going on to the north. We have this ridge coming into the eastern United States and this is progressing eastward rather rapidly in the face of this trough coming into the western United States. Now in a pattern like this, we're in the fall, but we're not in the winter yet, and we're getting to that time of year where you can get troughs digging in pretty deep into the western U.S., but the southern plains in Texas a ridge from the summer has not yet lost all of its gusto, so it's very hard for the trough to dig uh, very deeply into the subtropical latitude. So it tends to want to flatten out as it comes across the country and uh, become a more zonal jet stream as it comes across. What happens because of this is that heights remain high over the western Gulf of Mexico and thus it's pretty hard to get this to hook northwest into the trough. What's more likely to happen is that this progresses east fast, this flattens and comes over, and this ends up getting drawn north or northeast gradually across the greater Antilles and into the Bahamas region. In other words, what I'm saying is it's pretty hard to get this to come into Florida. Although Florida may get the western side of the system, I'm not expecting a direct landfall from a storm like this in this kind of pattern. It's too progressive in the short term and this kind of a trough situation does not favor a hooking motion to the northwest. And now we go out to day five here and you see that it does get pretty far west here over um, I think that's a Baco, the big island in the Bahamas there. And it does get close. This would be bringing probably tropical storm conditions to Florida, honestly, because of the strength of the northwest quadrant of this kind of a system. Um, but watch what happens here. It gets interesting as we go into the longer range. Notice the trough flattening out here, very strong southwesterly jet stream coming into southeast Canada. And we go out to day seven. And you can see that this starts moving northeast here. Here's the storm. This would be Sandy if it gets named, which it probably will. 
But see what's happening here. Notice that we have a big cutoff bowling ball low that got stuck beneath this blocking ridge south of Greenland. And uh, the heights over northwest US are still low, low enough that this trough wants to lift out here, and heights are prone to want to rise over southeast Canada, which has a great invitation for this block to retrograde westward in the face of this storm down here. And if we look out to day eight, see what happens. This uh, bowling ball low to the east uh, helps pump the heights to the north of the storm, and we start getting a little bit of a invasion of the blocking into southeast Canada, and here's what would be sandy. And by day nine, it ends up moving towards New England as this block, let me get this off my mouse, as this block starts expanding to the to the west, and by day 10, this is deepening as it comes in towards the eastern seaboard, and this is an amazing situation because you get this massive arctic block to the north, and this is a deepening upper low of tropical origin this storm is, but becoming extra tropical as it comes in towards the coast, and look at what the GFS has at the surface here. This is a 956 millibar low coming in towards the mid-Atlantic coast with all this heavy rain, and this would be one heck of a storm one heck of a storm. This would be all rain. Uh, the snow temperatures are way out over here, obviously, but this is going to be one heck of a storm if this kind of a situation develops. The interesting thing is the GFS is no longer an outlier in showing the solution. If we look at the Canadian, by day five, shows the storm near southeast Florida in the western Bahamas, and uh, look at this trough that it digs in to the southeast U.S. behind this as this starts to come north, and then this is the best phasing that you will ever see on a model here, just bombing this upper low down to 520 decameters, and uh, this is just amazing, and this is a 955 millibar low now coming into the mid-Atlantic, very similar to the GFS. Uh, the one big model that's not uh, showing a hint for this yet is the European, which has a nice hurricane likely here in the northern Bahamas by day 7, uh, but uh, by day 9, or by day 10 rather, you can see it scoots off to the east here, and it doesn't really get drawn into this big trough over the southeast U.S. And you can see there is a low here off of the mid-Atlantic, but this is a baroclinic low that did not develop from Sandy or 99L. Uh, but it may have been a piece that split off. Now, I think the reason that the European scoots this off is because this upper low is very big on this model, a lot deeper out here than it is on the GFS or the Canadian, so it allows it to cut under the ridge into the stream flow south of the upper low. But I want to point out that this situation that the models are showing here the GFS and the Canadian specifically, is not impossible. It looks extreme, but is not impossible for this kind of phasing to occur in a pattern like this because we have a strongly negative NAO, lots of blocking going on to the north right now, and the MJO is in a favorable favorable position. Remember, we have a lot of upper motion going on right now in the southwestern Atlantic, and when you get a trough, see if I can get back here. You get a trough coming across the country like this, it's going to want to dig and phase something if there's anything here near the eastern seaboard because troughs love to develop where there's a lot of upward motion to their southeast which helps feed the jet stream coming into them. So this is something to watch carefully and it's in the longer range. Right now our focus is going to be up until it gets to this point when it gets into the Bahamas because that's going to be the main impact felt over the next several days and anything beyond that is still up for questioning because we're talking about a 10-day time period. But right now, expect very, very gradual development right now. It's in the middle of the Central Caribbean. It needs to start coming to the north. Notice we have this frontal boundary here, and that's going to be flattening out gradually over the next few days. As it approaches this from the north, it will strengthen the pressure gradient to the north of the storm. And when you can when you can do that, there's stronger inflow coming in that can help feed the thunderstorms and help lower the surface pressure. So this is going to be strengthening as it moves northward, very similar to Raphael. Remember, Raphael had a strong pressure gradient to the north, too. As he came northward, he strengthened. So that's going to be the same story here, and uh, we can probably expect a very bad day uh, weather-wise for the Bahamas, Cuba, Hispaniola, Jamaica, and possibly southern Florida, depending on exactly how far west this tracks. We will know more about that once we see where the center starts to be uh, starts to be located as it gets drawn north. Right now, we're still waiting it waiting for it to make a west-southwest dip towards Nicaragua before it comes off to the north here. So we're going to have to wait for that. All right, well, that is it for today. I will have more updates as this develops. As I have always promised, if there's storms threatening land, I will post. I'll find time to do so. I apologize again for the lack of posts recently, but this has just been 
a very busy time that I did not expect to be so busy. Also, these model graphics that you see me using here, these will be posted on the website soon. What I have to do is find a way to implement them, deliver them in a nice fashion, and have enough products available um, that I have coded to make it worthwhile. I don't want to post like just the mean sea level pressure and that's it. I want to be able to post several products to make it a worthwhile model page before I send it up there and I have to have time to develop all that which again I am short on time so uh, please bear with me I apologize and uh, anyway that's it for today thanks for watching <laughs>